Welcome back uh, to another Tiny Titan Twitch. And look what we finally have. Look what we finally have. Do your arms hurt from getting twisted so much to get us to the point they where are, we can uh, showcase? My, my somewhat admirable arms are your a stretch, little sore. Stretch Stanway arms? A little sore from all the repeated twisting and turning they've gone through as we tried to relegate me to commit to... Uh, a day that we'd show this off for the first time, and we were very, very excited to be able to show you. Um, we had a well, lot. what is it? What are they looking at? You haven't even said this it. is for the very first time. Hang on, hang on. First, my name is Rob McCallum. I work at Tiny Titan as a producer. I'm joined alongside my good friend Glenn Stanway. Glenn Stanway. And what producer. do you do here? I am a producer, and I'm also the project lead for Tiny Rails. Okay. Now, not to draw this out. We've Any drawn, further? No, we've drawn it out. Have we drawn this out? Is it very overplayed? Much so. What are we looking at? We are looking at, for the very first time, the Steam version of Tiny Rails. Bam! Public this, first look. Here we go. This is actually the Steam version of Tiny Rails. I, uh, I I had wanted to show folks. Uh, we did, we do it. Uh, we have an opening animation when you start the game, which I was really excited to show off. And unfortunately, when uh, streaming Twitch. Via Steam, you don't show your library. You can't. It, it doesn't actually show the launch for the game. So, unfortunately, we can't share that with our users today. But they'll they'll have something they can look forward to seeing when they get a chance to play the game for themselves in a few short weeks. I like the bunny. I haven't seen that before. We got uh, yeah. We got a little rabbit down. I haven't the, seen the bunny or the butterflies. The bottom right there. We got some butterflies here. Oh, look at this train. Yeah, a couple of a couple of secrets you'll find as you're clicking about on the main menu. If we. Uh... Oh, look at that. I can turn the lights off on the house. We can turn the lights on and off on the house. Does this one do it too? It does. And, uh, I can shake the trees. A little bit of life in the trees. Oh, can I kill this deer? You cannot kill the deer. Can I spook the deer? You, you are actively spooking the deer. What about the train? Can I? No. Can we do something with the sun here? Why is... Why, what's... Oh! You made it all dark at night. It is. I'm going to ask you to stop clicking on things now. Okay. <laughs> was that wasn't supposed to happen, I don't think. I'm not, well, I'm also not sure what else might break. There may, uh, there may actually be some secrets tied to our title screen as well that are new to the game. Uh, and I don't want to spoil those for people right now. How about so, now? No. Okay. Uh, we should also say that this is still technically a beta build. Very much so, yes. So this is still a beta build of the game. This is not the final release version of the game, although we're working very hard to get that in place. So you will see some things that may still be placeholder or may still be getting iterated a little bit on. There's a lot of uh, effects that are in there that we're, we're sort of polishing up a little bit. So they're in there, but they're going to look a little different in the final copy of the game. And we're going to say that over and over again throughout the entire stream. So people that join us throughout understand that this is a beta version. It's not complete, but it's cool that we can get to the point where we feel comfy showing you. It is. Uh, our, our coder, Ali, just recently added this to the title screen, but um, the UI actually will fade if you're idle for I think about 10 seconds or so. So it's kind of nice. So you get you, you get to have that nice kind of... Uh, seems to over. seems to fit with the, the riding the rails kind of thing, right? When you don't touch the HUD or you don't yep. touch your screen in the mobile version for a while, the HUD disappears. Very much so. uh, I want people to take a specific note of the train that you're seeing too. I thought I heard, overheard something about that today. This is actually one of the things that I think is really cool to watch as you play the game. But And hi, uh, Compute Tricks Campo, thanks. Yeah, Who's hello, thanks on? for joining us. So please take note of the train that you see there, and we'll, we'll come back Looks to Looks like uh, Old West bit. Engine Caboose, maybe a food car, and a luxury passenger car? Indeed. Okay. So uh, down at the bottom here, we've got a play, a continue button. Credits and quit. So, what, uh, what's credits? Do? do we got something for that yet? We're going to talk about that. So, uh, so I just wanted to show folks we, we finally have proper credits in the game. Oh, uh, we don't actually have a credit screen in the mobile version of the game yet. So this is this is kind of a big deal for us. But this gets to show off uh, all the members of the team uh, who contributed <laughs> and some who just kind of give moral support too. But you can see myself up there, top center, and. Uh, Mr. McCallum himself is over on the right hand side. I didn't know I'm getting a production credit on this. That's great. Yeah. How did that happen? I haven't done any production work on this. You're very skilled. 
that's why you get a credit. So, okay, I'll take it. Uh, do have an options menu up top here too. You'll also be able to access your game, but we can control the volume of sound, uh, run it in full screen or a window. Uh, languages, at this point, uh, we have made enough changes in terms of text and dialogue that we're probably gonna be launching with English only, but okay. we, uh, we hope to get our translations updated before launch. Um, so, but, uh, sorry, when I say launch, I mean, we should, we'll probably be submitting without that, but hopefully we'll get that in there. Uh, we can change the resolutions depending on the monitor. Uh, and we do have a couple of nice, uh, kind of cool new effects in the game here. You'll probably notice the bloom effect on the lighting in the game, which I think looks really nice. And uh, we also have some motion blur, which users are going to see in a moment. <laughs> Yeah, when we okay. actually get into Can you game. bring that menu back up for Thanks. us? Because I did have some questions just sure. to clarify. So it says right now the resolution is 2560 by 1440. Mm -hmm. Does that auto pick your resolution depending on the monitor? Uh, it does, yes. Okay. Okay, so, that was cool. Yeah, it, the game is definitely displayed, uh, meant to be displayed in a widescreen format. So if you have a 169 or a 1610 monitor, okay. it's definitely going to look its best. That's, that's crazy. And that's really what we're shooting for. So. That's above 1920 by 1080, which is usually standard spec for, for Steam games. So that's that's great. It's that's like 2.5. That, that is our target resolution for the Steam game, too. Bit of a rabbit back here. I actually enjoy the rabbit. So there's some nice little stuff you can interact with just by clicking on it. Now I know users can't see our... They can't. I don't Our know. most clicks right now, but uh, um, there's some neat stuff you can do there anyway. We're really, really happy with how this turned out. And considering this is the first thing people are going to see when they start the game, yeah. that's important to us. So You guys added more smoke to that uh, chimney too, which is nice. We did. So uh, I'm going to bring up the play menu here just to show off something too. So for anybody who uh, who might not know this already, and that this looks probably cool. be everybody, uh, you can actually have multiple save slots in the game now. Uh, so we wanted to make sure that if people were sharing their Steam libraries with like a family member or a friend or just somebody else using the same computer, maybe there's a household or a couple of siblings both want to play the game and they don't want to fight over who has what train or, or what have you, uh, you can actually start your own game file and you can have up to three on the game. This continue function that you see on the main menu is actually linked to whatever game was most recently played. Okay. So if you were playing the game last and you come back into the game and click continue, it's gonna automatically load your game. Okay. And that'll be the data that it kind of caches for this title screen. Uh, but you can always go in here and switch files if you're so inclined to, so. And does it, it obviously doesn't necessarily auto-populate left to right, it's kind of whatever one you click on. Uh, more or less, yeah. Okay. So. Um, we have a blank slot in the opening slot here, so I think I'm going to get into that just so we can kind of take a look at um, some differences in terms of the first time user experience with the Steam game. Sure. Uh, I did ask uh, Andrew, or, or tech guy, and our QA lead to queue up a little bit of extra data for me too, uh, and I'll, uh, I'll get to why we wanted to be able to look at that in a little bit here too, but in the meanwhile. And I should say, we do have a list of questions that people have sent us all week, both on Tiny Rails, Tiny Rails Steam, and Dash Quest as well. And if you were watching on Twitch and you have questions, we'll try to try to get to them, but we really kind of want to do a first look presentation on this uh, tutorial and how things are different going forward for Co Steam. A couple of things that our viewers are going to notice as we go out, uh, throughout here, and if you look at the save slot, you'll sort of see this touched on for the first time. But we really tried to emphasize collectability in the PC version of the game uh, to a degree that maybe we haven't done as strongly as we could on the mobile version. I think there's actually a lot of lessons we learned from working on the Steam version that are going to influence what the mobile game looks like in the next little while. But uh, So we are going to maybe shift some of the stuff back. I think if it's a fit for it, we, we definitely will consider doing that for okay. sure. But So you'll see we've got a progress meter over there uh, in the left-hand side of the save slot. So that tells you how many cars you've collected out of the total number of cars available, how many stations you bought, um, how many uh, how many upgrades you've done to your train, how many moments you've found, and how many quests you've done. We've also got a, a ticker for secrets, how many kilometers you've traveled, how much time you've played. And you'll also see there's employee portraits up there as well to represent which employees you've encountered in the game already too. And we really just wanted to emphasize that feeling of that there were things to collect and there's there's more progress to be had and just really surface that right up front for people too. Two things too for our American uh, fans that are watching, you can change it from kilometers to imperial system in the option screen. You can. We didn't highlight that when we looked in there. But a question with the progress stat mm -hmm. percentage there, is that relation to story? Is that relation to stations bought? And does that uh, decrease if we unlock South America or Africa or Oceania or uh, that should be related to everything that you see in that window there. Okay. So that, that progress amount should be tied to sort of global game progress based on those factors. Cool. Um, 
Uh, one other thing I am going to point out, actually, before we get into the game, too, I, I'm, I'm, I hope our viewers find it as interesting to sort of pick this apart and, and sort of see the different things that are in here as we do. But um, you'll also notice at the top of your save file, uh, there is not a player name. No. There is, in fact, a train company name. Well, it's it's a it's a name, but it, yeah. what you're saying is that ties to a train company name. Yeah, we're going to explore that a little more in just a second. Uh, but I wanted to see uh, if our if our viewers could take note of that too, because you'll notice something a little different here as well. So I'm going to go ahead and start a new game. I also notice. Whoa, motion blur. I like that. I also noticed that it only indicated the amount of gold you had. Meaning. It's, there's only one currency in this version. Ah, there is. Of ah, Sorry. yes. I've been, <laughs> been working the on it so long and sort of forgot. Here's the breadcrumbs. <laughs> so um, this is our tutorial for the, the Steam version of the game. And what players are going to notice is it definitely looks a lot like the mobile one does. Mm -hmm. But there are definitely some key differences. Yeah. There's I'd some say. changes to the flow. And uh, there's a few additions, too, that you know, we'll be seeing as we go here. Let's, let's burn through it. Maybe not at a rapid pace, but let's definitely take the time to pause at the new stuff. Absolutely. So, uh, Grandpa's going to chat with you and introduce you to the whole concept of taking on his train. And in that respect, that's pretty similar to what you'll see in the mobile game as well. He's going to introduce us to, uh, to Valerie. And there's Valerie. Now, uh, one thing, one note I will make on Valerie as well. Um, this is, uh, this is Valerie's uh, current art from the mobile game, but uh, Valerie's going to have a bit of an updated look in the Steam version of the game as yeah, well. Yeah, I thought I saw Julie kind of uh, retweaking. <laughs> yeah, Valerie is one of the first characters we did, and uh, we just realized um, it's a lot easier when uh, for our viewers at home, we're, we're looking at what probably a 40, 42 inch television right now. Yeah. It's much easier to see the inconsistencies in some of the art on a screen this big. So uh, we realized that Valerie really just had a look that was a little bit different than the rest of the characters in the game, and we really just wanted to unify that a little more. So, so Val isn't going anywhere. She's still going to have a very similar appearance, but uh, she's going to be a little bit more in line with her other characters. And this is further to say that we didn't just take the mobile game and wrap it in the Steam box and say, here you go. No, we did not. It was really a process of getting the game up and running on Steam, uh, or, or on the PC at least, and then really sort of walking backwards from there mm -hmm. and seeing uh, where the opportunities were to change things. So um, first thing you may notice if you've got a good connection anyway, uh, is the game is much, much smoother. It runs really, really smoothly. The frame rate's great, which is um, really just nice to see. It looks really nice and crisp and clean on a big monitor. Uh, Valerie's going to introduce us to our passenger list. Now, we did make a few changes to the UI, uh, so you'll see some positioning of elements is a little different, and one of those things is the passenger menu sure. over on the left-hand side here. So we're going to cl click on that, <coughs> and Valerie's going to give us a bit of a scoop on how passengers work and how we want to make our uh, passengers happy. So we see <laughs> just no short rounds on our train. Huh. Okay. So this Indiana Jones fans out there, that was, uh, I don't think that was by design, and yet there it is. So we're going to continue on. Now, um, there may be... if you click that plane. Oh! Possible, possible there's some old dogs in the game that have some new tricks. Finally. Nice. So we really attack this with the notion of... There's a lot of life happening in some of these areas in the game, and we really want to try and approach it from the perspective of... Um, it, do you feel like you should be able to click on it when you're playing? Yes. Mm -hmm. If you feel like you should be able to click on it, then it should do something. Yeah. I'm not going to claim that every element of the game is going to feel that way, but we're definitely striving to make that a little more of, a, of an interactive element. Now, this is an interesting change. Gold ball. Uh, so Valerie's letting us know we made our first bit of gold. Things are a little different in terms of gold collection. So um, as we've talked about on streams before, uh, we wanted to make the experience of playing the Steam game feel a little more active mm -hmm. so that you had to be a little more active with your gameplay uh, rather than kind of passively or dipping your toes in here and there. So uh, with that in mind, we added a collect mechanic to the gold. So rather than having your gold just accumulate in the top left of the HUD like it normally would, um, got to go a little bit further than that. So that's what Valerie's explaining as to us right now. So what we're going to do is go ahead and click on our caboose. You'll notice there's a nice little... Uh, Gold Coin location. Icon, yeah. We're going to go ahead and tap on that. We're going to have all that gold spit out, and it's going to 
pop up into the corner and collect. Uh, what's nice about that is it'll do it automatically, but if you mouse over the coins, they'll, they'll auto collect as well, which is kind of cool. So there's a little bit more interactivity there too. Okay. Um, you still upgrade your gold capacity. You just do it via the vault on your caboose now, as opposed to it being just sort of a, 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 a train upgrade path that isn't really linked to a specific part of the train. Now we're gonna go ahead and upgrade too. So we're gonna go down to our upgrade menu and bam, that's change number two. Uh, mobile players will notice that this upgrade menu looks very, very different than it does in the, uh, the mobile version of the game. Uh, this part functions very similarly. We're gonna go ahead and grab our upgrade. Of course, it is just gold at this point. Gems are not a thing in the game. It's an all- So let's, let's reiterate too, like this is, we, we kind of skipped over this maybe when we should have talked about the Steam version as a whole. Mm -hmm. You will pay a blanket price for Tiny Rails on Steam, whatever that number is, you know, $10, $20. And you don't have to worry about buying anything in game. That's correct. It's all like kind of free. There's no paywall. There's no microtransactions. There's no premium currency. You buy the game, for whatever that price, and we're still trying to figure that out. We got to work with Valve and get their opinions on it. But whatever that is, that's it. I like that. I think that's pretty important to kind of know. It is. And uh, that's just a way in which seemingly minor things had to be considered mm -hmm. in relation to the Steam game versus what you see on iOS or Android. So uh, we had to reconsider how that upgrade menu looked and how it behaved. Um, the thing you will notice that is not in that upgrade menu is there are no trains in there. There are no longer engines or cabooses in the upgrade menu. Which I is, see that because uh, before it was kind of like a two up and now this is just a straight. Yeah, we're going to come back to that and we'll talk about that a little bit later. All right. Because people will be wondering now how they put their cool new trains on. So, uh, so Val is now going to talk to us about the gumball machine. Um, gumball machine is your primary method of getting cars for your train. I know that sounds weird, but who am I to question the science? Valerie's not a scientist, so she's going to she's gonna question that. Scientist, nice. But she's going to show us how things work, and we're going to go down and check out the gumball machine, and holy hell, that is a new-look gumball machine. It's a very different-looking gumball machine than what our mobile players will be accustomed to. So we'll take a, a little bit more of a peek at some of the elements here in a little bit because the tutorial is going to sort of just show us through at the moment, but... We're going to go ahead and close the gumball and we'll come back to him a little bit later. So now we specifically call it the car that you get the first time and there's a reason we do that. We have a new mechanic in the Steam version of the game where entertainment cars will actually generate extra gold for you on top of what you get from taking passengers to their destination. Okay, so you get passenger fares and then now the train that you have the way you equip it will also determine how much you earn because you're saying entertainment or food cars will give you money too. That is correct. Okay. So, uh, so for somebody who maybe has traditionally played a cargo game or a passenger game, you may actually want to re-examine what you've got on your, on your train now because entertainment cars will actually earn you money in real time while you're traveling as well. I feel like there's got to be another side to that coin though. Like it seems too good to be true that if I just load up with entertainment and food cars, I guess get to earn tons of money and I don't have to worry about anything else. There, there may be a rub. Okay. So we're, we're going to visit the train edit screen here. I, sh I should clarify, I have played the Steam version, but I usually only play it once a week. So I let you guys, you know, work on your list, pop your balloons, ding your bells, and then I kind of take a look at it and I give you a list and you're like, no, no, we're working on that. I'm like, okay. So there's still a lot of things I'm still trying to understand here. Uh, another change in the tutorial flow that some of our old uh, mobile players will notice is we actually direct you to how to equip the car right away. Okay. Uh, that is something where we, we kind of gave the game a little bit of room to breathe on the mobile version, but we, we decided for PC it made a lot more sense to really step players through that process completely. So we're going to go into train edit and we're going to look at putting on this new car that we just got. I am going to ask people to please ignore that layering issue. We're aware of that, but we're working on that. Again, work in progress. And we're going to go ahead and click done now. Um, oh, one of my notes. One of your notes. Done button is now in the bottom of the hood. It just made a lot more sense to have all those elements grouped down at the bottom and the attributes are their own sort of element up top there. You can still hide that bar if you so choose. Uh, the other thing players will notice is, and again, please ignore the, the welcome sign layer and that's driving me crazy. Yeah. Uh, we'll have that fixed pretty quickly. That's not a big deal, but 
Um, down in the bottom here, you'll notice there's tabs over in the uh, left-hand side. And what those tabs are for are your caboose, your cars, and your engines. So you now equip engines and cabooses from your inventory through the train edit screen. You no longer do that from a separate location. Cool. Which is pretty cool. Now, some of our players may be asking, that's great, Glenn, but how do I know which trains I actually have in my inventory? Where, are, where do I find my engines and my cars? And again, we're going to talk about that in a little bit. Okay. So right now I'm going to click on done. We're going to leave the lovely rustic villa of uh, Paramus and be on our way. I would have went with Paramus. Paramus? Just because it sounds more sci-fi. I'm not sure. I'm not sure which it is. Now here's uh, Valerie checking in to let us know that, hey, we got a food car on our train. Because I, cause I forgot cars. already that we're generating gold from that. So she's going to go ahead and show us how to do that. And the answer is it's very, very easy. Very similar to how you click gold from the caboose. We got our little notification there. We're just going to go ahead and tap on that. And we're going to auto collect all that gold. In fact, she's going to point out that look at all that gold. And she's <laughs> going to tell us some of the things we can do with that. We really just want to reiterate some of the purposes for actually earning gold in the game. This is another change. So we talked about this a little bit on the game file menu. Grandpa's just popped back in to tell us that he's really impressed with the progress we're making on a train already. So uh, he's, uh, he's basically going to hand us the keys, as it were. And he's going to allow us to take over the company already. So I like where this is going. Did I... Uh, <laughs> it, I uh, we had a lot of talk about how we wanted to handle player file naming. And we initially had names in there. And we decided to go with the whole idea of giving your, your train company a name. And again, the idea was we wanted to help players feel a little more tied to what they were doing and have a little bit more ownership over what they're doing. So now if you've got a couple of people in the house and you're playing Tiny Rails on different game files, you've got your own company name. You know exactly which company is yours. You know exactly which train is yours. No confusing it with anybody else in the household. So so uh, we thought that was something we wanted to, to take a little bit of time to do. So it's cool that you not only get the company, but you get to rename it too, because why keep your grandfather's legacy intact? Exactly. Grandpa isn't going anywhere. <laughs> Grandpa isn't going anywhere. He's still going to be on your train. Uh, he's still going to hang out and pop out and talk to you from time to time. But, okay. uh, but you're taking the reins now. We really wanted to emphasize that. I want to uh, welcome Bill the Cat to the stream. Thank you, Bill, one of our regulars. I also want to thank Andrew for underplaying uh, what we've shown off in our Tiny Girls team build so far. <laughs> yeah. Thanks for that. Oh, Andrew. Now, um... Are we going to click this? I'm excited about this. Or are we going to draw this part out? No, you know what? Well, I'm going to let you go ahead and click it. So, Rob's going to click OK. And this is our deed of ownership for our new train company. Um, really thrilled at how this turned out. Uh, I think the art team and our, our coder, Ali, uh, killed themselves on this. You'll notice Gramps' formal signature down there in the bottom right of the corner. So, uh... Do you want to name the company around? You want to call it Titan Rail Co? Titan, I think there's already a Titan Rail Co. I thought that was Tiny Rails Co. Hmm. Let's find out. Does it stop us if there's a similar save file name? It's called Titan Rails. Okay. Just to be safe. Just to, just okay. to be absolutely sure. A um, couple of notes on, on the deed. Uh, we do have a profanity filter on our naming conventions. So... Um, you know what, I'm not going to test that in front of the stream. <laughs> but suffice it to say, we've tried our best to, to, to pair naughty names out of there. Yep. And, and largely, part of the reason we did that is if at some point we do get a chance to, uh, to integrate some social elements into the Steam version of the game, which we would like to do. We definitely have some thoughts on doing that. Um, we don't want the naming of the companies to potentially be an issue. Sure. In terms of like our rating or, or just how, how that's going to affect people who right. may have any sort of social interaction with people in the game later on. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and confirm and we're going to name our company here and what? <laughs> apparently we can't do that. So you uh, somehow tripped a profanity filter. Uh, apparently so. I'm tiss, getting... tiss, dirty bird. What would grandma think? Ah, uh, Andrew says we can't use Titan. Somebody took Titan out of the, uh, out of the, the lexicon. Oh. It should probably not tell me that I'm a dirty bird for trying to call my company tightens stuff like that. <laughs> uh, thank you for uh, for letting me find that out in front of uh, viewers. <laughs> <Andrew>. <laughs> I 
Why don't we call it uh, John Owen Co. John Owen Rails. <laughs> Jeff Owens? Okay. Jeff Owens Rails. No. No, I don't want to get fired when I get back to my desk. Oh, that'll happen after that Titan <laughs> Rails anyways. Okay, so. Trains are us. Trains are us. <laughs> it's, Mustache Express isn't a, isn't a bad uh, suggestion. Uh, you would be surprised what what phrases are in that profanity filter. I, I learned some things about uh, about the world <laughs> when we were filling that out. So okay, Trains are us. It is. Hey, we get a little stamp. We get a little shake. That was official notary. And Trains are us. Grandpa's thrilled. He loves it. Oh, his, his favorite name ever. He's got a really good feeling about this. He does. Sure really. he does. He doesn't have to do any of the work anymore. Oh, that's a bug. That's okay. That will happen. Once Again, I, let's yeah. just reiterate. Let's just reiterate. At this, this juncture, the game. <laughs> at this juncture, this is a beta version. We feel pretty comfy about showing an offense while we're streaming it, but there are still a number of cosmetic and polish touches we want to do before it goes live. On what day is it live on Steam? Uh, it is going to be live on Steam on August 8th, which is a Tuesday. Tuesday, August 8th, not to be confused with Wednesday, August 9th. Tuesday, August 8th, this is live, and uh, a lot of these little glitches that you see will be eliminated. So, yes. So, firstly, I want to say uh, greetings to Oscar the Singing Hobo. <laughs> and uh, I want to inform Build the Cat that, yes, time should be taking while you're trying to think about a name, because... I've certainly missed opportunities because I've been so caught up on trying to figure out what the name something in my real life. Um, Val's about ready to hand things off for us, but she wants to talk to us about the logbook. So we wanted to make the logbook a little bit more prominent in terms of how the tutorial works. So we're going to go in there and she's going to tell us all kinds of things about the wonderful logbook. And we're going to plan our route. This is potentially going to be interesting. <laughs> so this is a beta version. Yes. Well, I guess they can't see me clicking. So uh, tutorial here works very much the same way. Where we click our node and we click our waypoint. They just can definitely hear you clicking. <laughs> and we get going. <laughs> <clears throat> Pay no attention to the massive amounts of clicks. Well, that's a new little icon there. Yes. So, um, do we have? There are donuts here. I was not made aware of any donuts, Oscar. I feel a little bit ripped off myself. Isn't, uh, it, isn't it snack time o'clock? Oh, it's, we it always, always is when we stream. We got to change the streaming time. We, really we start do. at like the beginning of snack time. We really do. Uh, now, uh, anybody who's played the game on mobile is going to notice there's a new button on the right hand side of the screen. Uh, we've updated the depart button to make it a little bit more prominent. And the other thing that we've done is uh, manual depart is now the default option on Steam. Okay. So if you are a Steam player, you will automatically have manual depart turned on by default, meaning you will have to manually leave each station as you play. And again, it's just about the whole idea of making it more interactive and putting the player in, uh, in the moment as they're playing. Um, for those who don't want to worry about that, if you're playing, I don't know, you're at work and you've got the game running on a second monitor or I don't know, you're playing the game on your mobile game and you want to keep the Steam game going too, uh, you can actually click that in the options and there's an option to turn auto depart on there. Uh, so that's still available for those who wish to big, use it. Big question then. Yes. In the mobile version, when you put your phone away and you get back to whatever you're doing, the game continues to run in the background, mm -hmm. making you know auto depart useful. Yes. Is Steam continue to run in the background? Uh, Steam will still simulate time passage when you leave the game. So when you come back, your train will still have traveled and you'll still have earned income as well. Okay. Oh, good. Just grab some money. That was that meter there. Oh. You see that? I did see that. I think your other car had some money too, maybe. Yeah. Maybe not. There's a couple of a uh, couple of things that people might note here that we'll talk about. I think it's next, isn't it? Mere oh, moments, yes. Yeah. Well, look at that. That's, That's new. That is new. Uh, that is also not final, I might add. Uh, that just got hooked up yesterday, and we're going to do some fine tuning on that, but the all aboard sequence is a little bit different now. Um, 
users are probably not going to be able to hear it. I know we get our volume pretty low on the on the source game right now, but there are oh, yeah. there are actually a, a fair number of new sounds and uh, missing sounds that have been accounted for too. Enhanced sound design. Now, uh, Valerie's getting her attention to let us know that uh, our cars are actually take a little bit of wear and tear. Wait, so they degrade? Here's the thing. As you're using your cars in the Steam version of the game, there's a few things that are going to happen. One is they're going to gain experience. So combining cars to level cars up is now a thing of the past. Or at least it is in the Steam version of the game. So you're and that's going, in this build already? It is. So okay. you're going to earn experience for your cars by using the cars. So if you like a car and you want that car to become better, you need to equip it to your train and actually make use of it. And it's going to earn uh, it's going to earn XP as you actually are out there on the rails traveling. The other side of that, of course, is well, we already talked about cars generating gold too. The other side of that though is you need to maintain your cars. And there's two ways you do that. You need to clean your cars. So your passengers are more likely to want to board your train because your train looks good and you need to repair your cars so that your train is traveling at full capacity and it's operating at peak efficiency and speed. Okay. So not repairing your cars will make your train slower and not cleaning your cars will actually make players less likely to board your train. So you're actually going to make less money if you're not maintaining your cars. Okay. So I got a big question there. Sure. Because we're talking about people that like to play the cargo game. Versus the passenger game. Sure. If I'm a cargo player, and I've been on mobile now since December, and I'm the cargo king, mm -hmm. and I've got the crane car, and I know how it works on mobile, and i got all the other awesome cars that carry lots of cargo, do I care about passenger happiness and how dirty they are? Uh, passenger happiness may not be as important to you, but repair certainly is. Okay. Uh, because again, it's going to affect your ability to get from point A to point B as quickly as you might like. Okay. And if you're playing the cargo game, you definitely want to get to those stations so that you can buy and sell. Okay. And you can take advantage of all those benefits to uh, to pricing or sales sure. that you get. Now I see uh, it looks like either like fire or sparks on our train that's hidden behind Valerie, but is there that because something that needs attention? That is definitely something that needs attention. So you're going to notice there's a new repair icon down in the bottom HUD here. Okay. So we're going to click on that. I should say it's a maintenance icon, and that's going to bring up our maintenance menu. So Valerie's going to walk us through how that works. Durability, okay. Yeah, so step one is we're going to grab our wrench. Step two is we're going to click on our car that needs attention. We got a nice little sequencer. You're going to see the durability of the car actually going up. So one of those meters you see above the car is a durability meter. Second is the cleanliness meter. So we're going to do the same thing there. We're going to grab the mop. We're going to click on our car and let it do its thing. And you'll see it's getting cleaner as we go. Um, might be a little tough to tell because it's nighttime and we've got the dark mask on there too, but there are actually a couple of layers of dirt that actually build up on the cars. They look pretty great. We'll see him soon, I'm sure. So Valerie is thrilled that we've maintained our car. It looks like we got some money to collect, probably both in the caboose. We do, so. And on, on the entertainment card there. That said, we are at a quest stop. Okay. So we're going to stop and have a chat here. And we're going to get introduced to Lance. Now, our mobile players uh, will know uh, Lance already. That being said, you're going to see some new things for how Lance works now. So, uh, Lance is actually explaining to us now that you can actually adjust ticket prices from the services window. Wow, so that happiness factor really matters. It really does. So, if you want to make the most money you can possibly make in your train, you definitely want to keep your passengers happy, which also means you want to keep your train maintained. Gotcha. So, there's a few factors that go into how likely a passenger is to get on your train. One of them is how well maintained your, your cars are, okay, whether they're one. repaired or cleanliness. Uh, the other is how upgraded your train is. So, the more cars your train has, the better chance you've got of getting passengers on it. More cars and the level of the cars as well? Level of the cars will play into that. Okay. And the rarity of the cars will also play into that as well. So, okay. customers are on the lookout for rare and special cars as well. Okay. Uh, so, for mobile users who've been getting any of the car bundles we've been doing on the weekends, you'll know that those are all classified as special cars. Um, the uh, They actually are a part of the rotation of car distribution now too. So you'll see those. Build a cat, that is a really, really interesting question you're asking right now. You're asking me, you not can, as tall as the tall guy. He can ask tall guy, because tall guy will happily tell him. 
Okay. I was going to ask Tall Guy anyway. Sure. Tall Guy, can you use your Steam controller? Can you use your shiny new Steam controller on the game? The answer is yes, you can. Um, okay. I, I will say right now, uh, we had hoped to do some controller optimization before we launched the game. I think it's unlikely that will happen at this point, although we're still going to spend some time looking at it. And we want to do things like uh, controller and keyboard remapping as well, which, again, unfortunately, is on the to-do list at mm -hmm. this point. Uh, that being said, the Steam Controller does work with the game by default, and I've actually spent a fair amount of time playing it with the Steam Controller myself. Okay. Uh, default controls, Bill, are uh, use the uh, the right touchpad controls the cursor, and then the right trigger will actually select an item. Okay. Um, the start button actually will close, uh, open and close options as well, so it functions very much like the escape key on the keyboard. Okay. So it will work, and it actually works uh, surprisingly well, and that's just the default setup if you happen to start the game and have a Steam controller hooked up. I really like this whole uh, thought behind how passengers get on. So you've got ticket prices that will influence their chance of being happy, the clean, the cleanliness and the durability of your cars, the number of cars you have, the kind of cars you have, and the level of cars you have. So it really forces you to use some great cars to get passengers on there. I don't know if I can parse the sentence that Build a Cat just posted. Hey, not as tall as the tall guy. I probably read that one. You are not tall guy. That would be mean. You are taller than, than the guy, not as tall as you guy. Oof. Been working some late nights, Build a Cat. So my That's a brain, lot of brain is words in processing words, words the way it used to. What are job points? Valerie just said something about job points. Uh, job points exist in the mobile game room. Okay. Job, so points, tell us about job points are a little different now, too. So, um, uh, as uh, our mobile players are know, uh, employees have passive skills. So, every time you gain a new employee, they just have a passive skill that they apply to your train just by virtue of being there. So, Lance has a passive effect on your gold earn, for example. As he levels up, that passive effect gets more robust. Uh, job points are still assigned to our employees. Um, the only major difference with Steam is you no longer gain them by turning a service on because the services do work a little bit differently on Steam than they do on the mobile version of the game. That being said, if you uh, pick up employee jobs, you still gain uh, job points for your okay. employees that way. Now we're going to go into <clears throat> the services menu and you'll notice the services menu looks a little different already. So. Uh, up top there is actually a, uh, a ticker where you set your ticket price. Um, you can actually adjust that and then based on the state of your train, there is logic that will basically correspond to Lance giving you some idea of whether or not you're a lunatic for trying to set your ticket price is that high or not. Uh, which is pretty cool. So you should actually see that adjust in real time as your train becomes better. Nice. Which is a really good idea. So if I crank my ticket prices now, probably going to be waved off. <laughs> Right. May not want to do that, but as I get it, if, if I have a level three car train that's made up of 18 cars that are all level three and they're all rares or they're all specials, um, I may very well be able to crank my ticket price and have a much better chance of getting that from my passengers. The other thing that's affected by your train quality, of course, is VIP passengers. Okay. So VIP passengers will also be more likely to board your train if it's well maintained, fully leveled up has rare and special cars, so those are things to consider as well, because VIPs will pay you more. Now you'll notice, we've got a switch on the service here. Now, it used to be that you'd spend gems and you'd get a certain block of time uh, allocated to you uh, from your uh, employee. We did change it on Steam because the time-based thing really just didn't make as much sense anymore. So essentially, when you turn a service on now, you can toggle it on and off, and you're, you're basically just taxed for having the service active. Now, you'll also notice that Lance's service has changed because him generating more gold for you just in two different ways just didn't make sense in the context of a game that doesn't have gems involved in the economy anymore. So Lance's new ability is he's going to lower market refresh rates by 25% for you. Uh, so you're going to be able, if you have a service active, you're going to be able to buy and sell at markets more often, which is going to be really important for those players we talked about earlier who play the cargo game. Sure, I can see that. I definitely. So we're going to go ahead and toggle that on. Lance is going to be thrilled that we did. And then we're going to go get our request for order from the logbook. I feel like we should hurry. Why do you say that? 
Uh, I am going to toggle that back off. Why are you um, doing that, Glenn? Uh, mostly because I want to make sure I get gold to spend on some other things. While That's what I meant about people. hurrying. Yes. So uh, we only had 40 gold there, 39, and uh, every two hours it deducts 20 from that. So uh, if you've got a service on, make sure you have the funds for it, or otherwise you might see your, your cash reserves. Uh, one Definitely. other thing I wanted to show people, there's a lot of nice little visual touches that we've added in on Steam that are not present in the mobile game. So uh, if you'll take a look, I'm going to collect this secret. This is the uh, the barrel roll secret that we found earlier. And yeah. uh, keen game fans may notice the uh, the reference that we're making there. If you collect that, there's a nice little effect now that we've thrown on that icon. It's just, just little touches like that here and there that kind of feel good and look nice. So um, we're going to go ahead and depart and... Let's take a closer look at the gumball. Now, uh, one thing I did want to show you is as I mouse over things, you'll notice we actually have tooltips. Okay. Letting you know what these things are. And over top of the tooltips, you'll also notice keystrokes. Yeah, we got some hot keys. So we do have hot keys on the keyboard for these two, so you can actually tap those keys to open them. How, do we have a hot key menu that'll open up or anything? Uh, we do not at present. So we are eventually going to have keyboard mapping in the game. Okay. We don't right now, unfortunately. Okay. It's just we had we had more important. Things Do we have anywhere that lists all the hotkeys in one fancy spot? Statue of Liberty. Indeed. You got to remember with that gold collection too, you can only carry so much. It is true. Kind of want to upgrade that vault. Grab a couple of those. Hit our first obstacle. And we're going to meet Hank as a result of that. Again, this is uh, just throwing it out there. This is a beta version. For anybody that doesn't know, we're just showing it for the first time. First look at Tiny Rails on Steam. Again, I want to save our money. Just to show you the ticker a little bit more closely, too. What you're not seeing in the background is that Lance is really getting engaging what your likelihood of actually making more money based on the state of your train is, which is pretty fun. Yeah. Um, Click that gold. It's fun to watch. Oh, we uh, got a, and it looks like there's a level up too. Got a train that looks ready to level up here too. So you'll notice, guys, um, if we mess over this train, down at the bottom, you'll see that we've got our little level up here. That's actually not working. Uh, but we can actually level up a car directly from there now. I haven't um, seen that yet. We also can see our details here, and we do have a level up ready in the car details as well. So you'll actually see we've got uh, the uh, the gold generation cap, uh, your durability rating, and your cleanliness cap in the car details now as well. And if we hit that cost there, we'll actually level our car up. Now, let's take a closer look at the gumball here. We should get to some of the questions we have this week too. And we have oh. we have about fifteen minutes left. That's it. So let's talk let's about talk gumball. Let's talk gumball, and then so, we can carry on after next so, week. So uh, mobile players are going to notice a lot of very different stuff here. Uh, so chief among them is gumball machine now has a rank. What does that mean? It means your gumball machine will actually level up as you use it. Which means it is going to determine which cars it will distribute for you. So every rank has a certain set of cars. There's essentially a set of cars that's available for each rank. Okay. And you need to complete the rank of your gumball machine in order to be able to unlock all of them. So uh, you basically have to fill the ranks in order to progress and get more cars. Again, it was really just our, our thought was we really wanted to put an emphasis on collectability and progress, and those are two ways that we felt that we could do that and make that feel like much more of a kind of a progression game for our PC players. Thanks very much, Oscar, we appreciate that. Hopefully you're seeing enough different things here that you're excited about the Steam release too, but uh, mm -hmm. we very much appreciate our Android and iOS players as well. Uh, so we've got our, our very involved car counter over here, including engines and cabooses. Uh, that's actually the first time I've seen those icons, those are pretty adorable, I like those. Um, so you can actually spend your gold, roll your car. Spend your gold, roll your cars. Yellow passenger car. And we're going to see a nice mix of cars. And really, we, we tried to break up the uh, the ranks so that you would get 
a nice selection of cars. So there'd be a little bit of color and a little bit of interest. So the taco car and the yellow uh, car will make a, an appearance fairly early on to provide a little bit of color for players. So what's going to happen is you'll earn each of the cars. Now in rank one, we've got our initial engine and caboose. But what's going to happen is you're going to earn uh, each of those cars. You'll have an opportunity to buy a new engine and caboose with each rank, and then you'll proceed to the next rank. Now the way that we're rolling here, is it a predetermined roll? Like, is it like that car, then that car, then that car, or is it like rolling within those? Um, while you were talking, we just leveled up there. I hope people noticed that, but there's a nice little level up effect on the gumball rank and then little flag there lets us know we've got new cars available. It actually is random. Uh, so it will determine, it will randomly give you one of those cars over the rank. So it won't be the same car every time. Okay. So not everybody will start with the same car. It'll be randomly determined by their game. Gotcha. Which is kind of neat. So we're going to close that out. I'm surprised we didn't force them to pay to upgrade the gumball to level two. It's like now ready for upgrade like we do for the trains. It's nice that we're helping them out like that. That's good. A little bit of a new market tutorial. Uh, players are also going to notice the market location has changed. Uh, just didn't make sense to have it where it was in light of the way PC players are going to play versus a mobile player. So we're going to go in there. We've got a little bit of a better tutorial here for this now, I think. So uh, you do get cargo from the obstacles you clear. So Hank's giving us some cargo. We're going to sell that. And then we're also going to train players how to buy too. So they're going to suggest that we grab ourselves an apple. And that's our market tutorial. Uh, one other thing I wanted to show about the map here. It scares me every time that pops. Is uh, we did add tooltips into the map as well. That'll be super helpful for uh, people who constantly message us we, asking, where is this place? We know our players are not all going to be geography buffs. <laughs> <laughs> in fact, certainly we are not. Or they don't live in a given country and it might be harder for them to find it around. Now, it is not a, it is not a dramatic change to the map by any means, but if you mouse over any node now, it will tell you what that location is. So that's it will hopefully slow. make things a little bit easier to navigate for, uh, for players. And then, of course, you can click on it to set a destination and to a waypoint as well. Cool. Uh, let's spend the last 10 minutes here going over some of our questions. Sure. And then, of course, we can continue to show Steam next week as we uh, ramp up for that August 8th launch, which is getting pretty excited. Um, most of these questions are, of course, are gonna be for Tiny Rails Mobile, and I think there's one or two for Dash Quest. Um, I heard uh, last week's stream when you guys talked about making games and how you don't encourage ideas from outsiders. This might be dumb. <laughs> this might be dumb. That, that's, a, that's a bit of... A stretch. That's a bit of an interpretation of my words that I wouldn't necessarily agree with. Okay, this might be dumb, but are you hiring? What positions and where do I go? Well, first of all, uh, <laughs> what I uh, what I want to say is I, I would never suggest that we discourage outside ideas. We, we get a lot of feedback from our players and our fans, and a lot of that feedback makes it into some of the ideas that we generate mm -hmm. uh, because our fans play the game more than, than anybody possibly could. So uh, those ideas do mean a lot to us. What I what I was referring to was we don't solicit people for game ideas. Correct. Which is to say, if you have an awesome game design document for this amazing game that you've been waiting to make, don't send it to us. <laughs> it's just it's just easier on the legal side not to have to worry about those entanglements. We don't want to be accused of stealing anybody's idea, so on and so forth. So that that's more what I was addressing there. Uh, in terms of if you want to be a Titan, we are hiring, so it's a great time to try and be a Titan if that's something that is of interest to you. And what I would suggest is you're going to want to hit our website at tinytitanstudios.com. Correct. And uh, Rob actually has been handling all the uh, the updates to the to the site as yeah. far as the the jobs are concerned. But uh, yeah, if you if you uh, if you have some experience with the game discipline and you think you'd be an asset to our team, there are exciting things and many things on the horizon and we uh, we definitely will need more personnel to help us handle those we're almost looking at every kind of position we're looking for artists junior producers uh, project managers and product managers and lead designers uh, coders so take a look at our career section on tinytitanstudios.com and if you think you've got what it takes wow us please get us excited about who you are and uh, we'd love to talk to you about joining the team if you've got what it takes
Um, Oscar's asking, so how will boosting the trains and paying your employees work without ads or gems? Basically, it's all gold on it's the all Steam gold. version. It's all gold and it is a little different. So uh, as I mentioned before, Oscar, services are now toggled on as opposed to paying for sort of a one-shot amount. You turn the service on in every in-game hour, uh, you will be billed for the service accordingly based on the cost of the service. Uh, so the boost service that Sophia offers is still in the game. You're just paying for it a little differently now. Um, the speed boost, the old double tap speed boost that people know from the mobile game is still in there by doing a double click and hold. That's it now. It's a secret everybody knows now. Um, as far as any other sort of boost, we're, we're looking at potentially putting a boost function on engines. We'd very much like to do that. It's just a matter of making sure we've got time and proper design to make sure that that feels good. But we'd like to have some interaction on the engines very much like we do with the caboose and the cars. And that's sort of what we're hovering around for that. Um, these might be rapid fire, like a yes or no from you. Several stations are missing the respective country flag. Are, mm -hmm. we, are we going to see these added in the future? You will. Uh, the coverage of Germany is somewhat odd. One of the larger European train countries gets a single stop, shifted somewhat more towards Poland than it should, in my humble opinion, while other European countries get several stops, Romania or the Czech Republic. Would it be possible to address this in the future? It would. Uh, would it be possible to add routing options that would travel through factories? Can I just come back to the Germany one yeah. for a minute? Not untrue, uh, and it's it, it was it, it certainly wasn't a conscious decision when we where we said no, we just don't want to have stops in Germany or or anything to that it's effect. It's not what our design documents say. It's it's largely based on geography and like relative geography. So even if you look at our map of the U.S., for example, there's a very limited number of cities that are actually represented on our U.S. map, but comparatively, it's a substantially larger country, and. It's, it's really more about that than anything, but I, I would like to think that one of the things we'll be doing, especially as we fill in our world map, is going back to some of these countries where we haven't gotten a chance to spend a lot of time or maybe haven't had a chance to add in quite the content we wanted to do and find new ways to bring players back to those old areas and adding some new locations or maybe some quests in some new locations that aren't on the map now. Um, might be a really good way to do that. I just had to laugh at that angry passenger emoji that came out. Yeah, I don't know if anybody's noticed the passenger emojis yet. That's a new thing we've added in. And that's really just to give players a snapshot of what people think about their train. Uh, so those are the reactions of passengers who are getting on and off your train. Uh, it will really just kind of do a survey of your entire train and give you a sense of how people feel about it. And you'll notice there's things like icons for ticket prices, um, uh, repair, so on and so forth, that you can find in there too. Continue, Rob. Uh, would it be possible to add a routing option that would travel through factories just to save time? Europe, North, and South is particularly affected by this. To travel through factories. There are design considerations on that one. Uh, I would say I'm open to the idea, but we have to make sure that it wouldn't foul up anything with the factories. Factories basically are designed to support to and from travel the way that other stations are right now. Would it be possible to add an option that would speed up slash skip passenger slash money transfers upon arriving at a station? Sorry, to speed, the, so basically just to speed up the entire arrival process, am I understanding that right? That's how I would interpret it. Have you uh, cleaned our cars lately? How, how are they looking? Well, that was actually not too bad. These guys I just put on, so let's get in there and we'll give it a quick clean. Oh, this is a good chance to show you we do have a repair all and a clean all as well. So you can do everything at once if you're so inclined. Nice. Um, what was the question, Rob? Speeding up the, the transition process to stations. It's, it's a good idea. I'm certainly not opposed to it. Okay. Yeah. Well, they're, they're, it, it's all about like how do we make it integrate around. There's a lot of stuff at stations that's very carefully timed out right now, and that's my only real concern is like how does that stuff function when there's some emojis there. Um, everybody thinks it's clean. Well, that's just great. It was just someone just didn't like the price. Yeah, somebody thinks we're charging too much for having the default ticket price. Yeah, they can go on Railco for all I care. Yeah. Uh, so I'm actually going to exit the game here, and I'm going to do that for a specific reason. But we talked about. Yeah, we know. We talked about the train that runs in the background on the title screen, so I want people to pay very close attention to this. But when you see your train come through, you'll notice it's our actual in-game train. 
So your title menu train will actually reflect the current train you have on your game. So the train that was uh, equipped during the last played session will be the one that comes up there. So essentially the train is linked to the continue option on the menu. I like it. Only a couple more questions here, and that's good because we only have a couple more uh, minutes. Uh, the last few weekends have featured train cars for gems, but other weekends it's been train cars for money. Mm -hmm. Can you guys please be more consistent? I don't want to stock up on gems and be asked to pay cash for something. Gems are cool and we can use them in more places. Yeah, uh, I think we agree. I think for the most part you'll see that it's we're going to be putting more of an emphasis on gems going forward. I'm certainly not going to claim that we're never going to have traditional in-app purchases of, of a kind or a sort. On mobile. It all anymore on, on mobile, sorry. Yeah. How does that work for new train cars coming to Steam? Uh, we're still figuring that out, actually. So I, I think it's safe to say that in content updates, you'll see us uh, seeding cars in and making some changes to the gumball levels as we do that. And so should we talk about, are we still figuring out how content updates work on Steam? Usually every two weeks or so we do yeah. small pushes on not, mobile. Not so much ready to talk about that yet. Okay. I think in a very high level vague way, I think you'll see that the Steam updates are probably going to be uh, lined up around the notion of um, major content updates. Okay. So I think sense. we'll probably do them on a very similar schedule to the major content updates that we do. So on like, for example, if we were to unveil uh, another continent... Um, and a bunch of new cars had come out on mobile, that would be the ideal time that we would push them to Steam. Or it would be very closely lined up with that, I think. Okay. That seems time. to make sense. Um, Dash Quest version 2.66 seems to be better than the version from last Friday. The gold drops aren't quite what they were, and the XP, XP feels weaker. What happened, and will it be back to normal? Do you want to field that one, Rob? Not really. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, I am actually not involved with Dash Quest right now. So I am. I'm, yeah, I'm going to... I'm gonna, Happily pass that question. We, uh, we released to much excite um, a new update for Dash Quest last Friday at this time, and you were even tweeting on air when this occurred. Mm -hmm. And uh, a lot of people were not happy with the way that we nerfed and stretched out uh, the level progression, and, and simply uh, we had to stretch that out because people that picked up Dash for the first time could essentially get to level 100 if they were kind of knew what they were doing within about two, three hours tops. So we wanted to stretch that out and lay the groundwork for a few new updates that we got coming. So we may have went a little too far in one direction, but we released another update on Monday, Tuesday, depending on your platform, that pushed it back up. And now we feel like we're in a good spot. Will it ever be back to normal, however? Um, what is normal in the game industry? Everything is changing, ever evolving. We think we're at a... Oh, look at that. Uh, we think we're at a pretty good spot in terms of gold collection and uh, generation and XP as well. And we got something really cool that we want to uh, happen for both of those. We just need some time from some of our coders before we can announce it. Yeah, and, and I guess the only other thing I would say, as somebody who isn't involved in, uh, in Dash Quest directly, but who certainly had the experience of, of maybe making a choice that was unpopular in one of our games, um, we do consider this stuff very carefully before we do it and before we make broad sweeping changes. We really do try to make sure that we're, we're bearing in mind all the players who are going to be affected by that yeah. and what the ramifications of that are. Um, the fact is sometimes we just have to make those changes because for the health of the game and the health of, of, of our average player, um, it's just not healthy long term to, to keep something set up a certain way. That being said, we will wear that. Yeah, I mean, it, it, the fact is, if, if, if a game is broken and it's broken because it was designed that way and we didn't properly consider something, uh, that's definitely on us. And I mean, we'll, we'll take the heat for that if, if mm -hmm. we come to a point where we have to fix a mistake. Uh, so I guess that's all I'll say is for those who are upset about those changes, um, we appreciate that. We'll, we certainly were listening, hence the yeah, other update. We'll, we'll, like I said, we'll, we'll wear that because that, that's on, it's on us for having put us in a situation where... We had to really realistically look at doing something like that to begin with. But at the same time, if we've got to make a choice, sometimes we have to make that choice. Yeah. And there's new players every day that aren't going to realize what it used to be like. And so put yourself in their shoes and maybe uh, you'll realize you might not be getting as much gold or XP as you think you should. But when they get to what is now level 100 to 125, which people have posted about achieving already, by the way, in less than a week, which is a steeper XP curve. Um, it, it, it should become a more enjoyable process instead of like a grind fest for farming and stuff like that. So mm -hmm. that's good. Um, that we are going to do a, a Tiny Rail Steam giveaway 
for one of our press kits. Oh, oh we're going to talk about this now. We can't give too many details, but I just thought it would be the last thing that we should mention. So you guys saw our awesome Super Nintendo inspired like boxes, instruction manuals. Uh, we are going to give that away to somebody. Uh, and it'll also come with a couple tiny rail stickers. Very and, cool. Uh, we will announce the details of that. Uh, I would think that is going to be very popular because I know how many people have reached out to us about those and how much they they want to have them. So, so that's pretty cool. Yeah, it'll probably be something like pretty simple, like share this for your chance to win. We don't know what we're going to ask you to share yet. We don't know if it's going to be on both Facebook and Twitter, or one on one and then one on another. Um, We'll see. We're going to have some fun playing with that. But you will have a chance to get a copy of the Steam game for free, plus our instruction booklet, our box, and a couple of tiny rails and tiny, tiny stickers. So with that, um, I think that concludes another successful Titan Twitch. I think so. Um, you got your first look at Tiny Rail Steam today, and we'll probably continue to show off Tiny Rail Steam in the future. Uh, last parting thoughts, Mr. Uh, Stan Bloom? Yeah, I would say it's uh, <laughs> Stan Bloom effect. <laughs> It's my favorite thing in the game now. Uh, let's just slowly turn those on. Okay, there we go. Um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm really excited to finally have gotten the chance to show players what they're going to be able to expect from the Steam version of the game. I don't think there is a person on the team for whom this is not the preferred version of Tiny Rails now. Uh, we all really love it. We're really, really excited about the things we've added to the game and the things that we've changed and tweaked. Yeah, We're really cool. excited to have players get their hands on it. So thank you so much for joining us and getting a chance to see this for the first time. Uh, it's been our pleasure to show it to you and looking forward to showing it to you over the next couple of weeks as we gear up for launch as well. All right. So from myself, Rob McCallum, thanks for watching and... And Glenn Stanway, product manager on Tiny Rails. Thanks very much. Take care, guys, and we'll see you next week.